Disclaimer, if you intend to comment on this video, please remain respectful to the victim and his family who had to go through this tragedy. Alligators, they're just as deadly as they look, but alligator attacks are rare. Despite what popular media tells you, alligators are naturally afraid of humans. But what if there was an alligator that was so ruthless that it did not fear humans? Stick with us as we discuss one of the most terrifying alligator attacks in Texas history, one that made it to national headlines. Before we discuss the attack, let's get to know the victim of this unfortunate incident, Tommy Woodward. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Fear Zone. Before we really start telling you about this terrible event, I would like to ask you to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you're a member of the Fear Zone family. Let's start quickly. Tommy Woodward grew up in Pacific, a town close to Missouri, Texas. Tommy had a twin brother and an older sister. His childhood was not the best. Their world was completely broken down as their parents decided to separate from each other. His family was in a very tough situation and struggled to put food on the table. This was his life for several years. Tommy was very energetic, pleasing, and had a bit of charm to himself. Tommy went on to join a traveling carnival as a carny. When he returned, he started helping his dad to remodel sonic drive-ins. But this business was not successful, and it lived a very short life. For the next few years, Tommy went around doing odd jobs as he struggled to make proper income. He could barely make his ends meet. However, things were soon going to change for Tommy, for the better. While Tommy was in his early 20s, his brother contacted him. The brothers had formed a very strong bond and attachment for each other. The brothers went through a lot of tough situations as they grew up. While they were in high school, they went days without food and even spent months living in a tent under a bridge. Tommy's life did not come very far from what it used to be. His twin brother Brian was married and had a child with whom he lived in Orange, Texas. His life was quite a contrast compared to that of Tommy's, but he wanted to make sure that his brother did not have to endure any more tough times. Brian offers Tommy a job in the city he lives in, and not only did he offer a job, he also told him that he doesn't have to go around searching for a place to stay. He could stay with Brian and his family at their place as long as he needed to. The family was more than happy to accept Tommy at their home. Tommy didn't have a lot to think before he made his decision. He didn't have much to leave behind in Pacific, and neither did it seem like there would be anything for him to gain by staying there either. He accepted his brother's warm offer, quickly packed his bags, and went straight off to Orange. Tommy has stayed with his brother and his family since then. There was a new ray of hope in Tommy's life, and he valued each and every minute of the new life he got. He started working hard and was determined to make something of himself. He wanted to give his brother and his family their own private space. He worked hard and proceeded to make enough money to buy a house for himself. He didn't move far from his brother. He got a place in the same neighborhood. The brothers valued relationships a lot, probably because they knew how much it meant considering how their childhood was. Tommy would often call his older sister, Tabitha, and their mom, Kelly, late into the night just to have a casual conversation. Before we continue with this crazy event, I kindly ask you to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss another video. We'll move on quickly. Tommy and Brian had a habit which was rather unhealthy. Both of them were heavy drinkers, but they always took care to make sure that this did not affect any other aspect of their lives. They always made sure to give their all while working. The locals there had no problem with the Woodwards. They only had good things to say about them. In fact, they felt there was never a dull moment with them and it was the energetic and charming boy who they loved the most. Tommy was quite outgoing and often went swimming, dancing, and hanging out with people at the Burkhart's Marina, which was near his place. Tommy's life had come a long way from what it once was and he was extremely grateful for it. Years went on. He was 28. Tommy was a regular at a bar at the marina called Adams Bayou. Even though his life was much better, his habits did not really change. He would still get very drunk, but he didn't cause any problems for anyone and made sure the people around him had a great time. It was the 2nd of July 2015. It was just another night for Tommy. He was drinking lots of beer, spending time with his friends, and trying his hand at the pool. He was doing what he loved doing the most, giving everyone around a great time. Hours passed by. Two hours past midnight, Tommy and his friend Victoria decided to go out for a swim. The place they chose to swim was not really the best. It was the dark waters of Adams Bayou, which happened to be just next to Burkhart's marina. What made things even more dangerous was that a few days ago, Kent Robnett, a local construction worker, had reported the sight of a huge gator in the middle of the bayou. Gators were quite a common sight around this area, 
but this time it was concerning. Usually gators, especially the larger ones, do not let their presence be known. They prefer to stay stealthily. It's an important instinct for the bigger gators to stay hidden, and the only reason why such gators had no problem in being out in the open was that it did not fear anything. The gator had scars and scratch marks on his face. It had a very evil look to itself. Kent was not the only person to spot this scary, enormous alligator. The owner of the marina had also spotted what seems to be the same gator in the bayou. He was quick to act as he went on and stuck up a no-swimming sign. But despite the warning of Kent and the no-swimming sign, the unfortunate was soon going to happen. Tommy chose to ignore this sign, a decision that he would not live to regret. Before we continue with this crazy event, I kindly ask you to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss another video. We'll move on quickly. The duo had approached the edge of the water. Victoria noticed that there was a huge gator swimming out from under the dock. The gator was letting them know that their presence was unwarranted. The gator did not fear them. In typical hunting fashion, the gator raises its head out of the water and looks around for what could be its next prey. Victoria screams at Tommy in an attempt to warn him about the alligator. Tommy, who was very drunk, not only ignored her warning, but went on to shout, Fuck that gator! What came was even more cocky as he jumped into the water. Victoria was very tense, but Tommy wasn't. He was relaxed and was swimming casually towards a small island on the other side of the bayou. Things got very horrific spontaneously. Victoria was petrified as she saw Tommy being pulled under the water. Surprisingly, Tommy resurfaced somehow. He took this opportunity to tell Victoria to stay out of the water. Victoria, who was going to jump into the water to save Tommy, decided not to. She asked Tommy to hold on for as long as possible as she ran back up to the bar. She quickly alerted Michelle Wright, who was the bartender, about what happened. Michelle quickly dialed 911 and asked for help. She then grabbed her flashlight and headed to the bayou. Victoria and Michelle looked all around for Tommy. The darkness of the midnight crept all around the place. It was only a few minutes later that they were able to spot Tommy's body in the dark. There it was, Tommy's body floating face down. But that wasn't the end. The gator comes back and pulls Tommy back into the depths of the water. The Orange County Sheriff reacted to the situation with a boat and a game warden from the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Two hours later, Tommy's body was recovered. His left arm was missing, which meant that the gator grabbed his elbow and drowned him. He was then death rolled, which is usually done to rip off the limbs to stock them for later consumption. Local game wardens initiated a hunt for the gator, which was unsuccessful. Kent Robnett, the construction worker who had warned the locals, decided to take things into his own hands. He set up several gator traps and lines around the premises. The gator fell into his traps. Kent proceeded to unload seven rounds into the alligator's head, which marked the end of the predator's life. Soon, Kent turned himself into the local authorities. He said that it had to be done, and that the gator was a threat to the lives of those in the locality, which included his children, who often take a swim. This was definitely a tragedy for the Woodward family and a huge loss for the people in Orange. This alligator attack was only the first one in Texas over two centuries. This makes one wonder, how safe are the backwaters? Let us know how you feel in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.